I used to sit on the deck with Jeffrey. It was like I wasn't sitting there with my son. He would be staring out to the trees, and I'd be sitting next to him, and he would be saying things like, it, it, he would, it would be broken. It wasn't like a, a continued story. Or, or He would say, um, yeah, and, and then they had us bury, bury the blood stains because the reporters were coming. He said there was a, a, a family trying to get back to mm -hmm. their uh, home. They were, they were running, were trying to get back into their house, and they shot them. And he said, what was that all about? What did that mean? He said all they were trying to do was get back into their home. And, it, and then he brought up something about having to, to, to uh, bury whole bodies and body parts. And I believe at the time he said that the body was worse because the body parts were just parts. And, and he would be saying this stuff, and I'm sitting there like thinking, no, he, this can't be. And, and I'm not really focusing so much on what he's saying, because when he, but how he was saying it, that this wasn't my son. And he said that when they were driving convoy, that children come, or especially children, if they were to get in front of your truck, you are to just keep going and not look back. Jeff's father, Kevin, says that when Jeff returned from Iraq, he never took off the Army ID tags that hung around his neck. Kevin explains that these tags represent the two prisoners Jeff was responsible for killing. Jeff wouldn't take off the dog tags. Jeff said that they were in Iraq, and they had these two unarmed prisoners, and somebody yelled at Jeff to pull the fucking trigger, Lucy. And um, I can remember Jeff talking about how one of the kids was about as young as he was in his 20s. And he connected. He looked at the kid and he wondered if he was somebody's son. Was he somebody's father, somebody's brother? Jeff had his ra rifle raised. It was shaking, but he pulled the trigger. Jeff Lucy arrived by bus at the Marine Reservist Center in New Haven, Connecticut. He had been in Iraq for nearly six months. Joyce explains that the Marine Reservist Center provides information on what to do and what to avoid for a veteran upon coming home. She says that certain events could trigger a PTSD attack. You might not want to let them drive a car because now in, in Iraq it's different. When you come here, you actually have stop signs and red lights. And over there, they, they drive differently. You uh, never you, drove with your yeah. headlights on yeah. at nighttime. At nighttime. He had the night goggles. Uh, yeah. You might not want to throw a party for him. They might not be up for that. Kevin speaks at a campaign to make November American Veterans Month. This is part of the Services for the Underserved campaign. On June 21st, 2004, Jeff stated to a vet center employee that, quote, no one cares enough to help. On June 22nd, 2004, Kevin went out to the deck of his home to look for his son. And he wasn't out there. When I was walking by, the cellar door was open. And I saw the light on, and I saw the shrine that he had built. Walk down the steps, and I went directly over to the shrine. My focus was on that. And I saw the blood, and then I saw the three letters he left, and one was covered with blood. And then right outside the corner of my eye, I saw Jeff Uh, who I thought was standing there. And uh, his eyes were closed. And then I noticed the hose double looped around his neck. So I ran over and I uh, put my knees underneath him and I propped him up. And I started pulling the hose from around his neck and uh, he was so cold and so clammy. I thought I felt a warm spot on his chest, and so I started rubbing it. But uh, I knew he was dead. 
Each day, 18 veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan kill themselves as a result of PTSD. Jeff was one of them. Kevin says one of his memories of his son was as a volunteer when Jeff was younger. One of the things that stands out for me is all our kids volunteered at Camp Sunshine. Um, I forced Jeff into a costume, uh, I think a squirrel costume or a raccoon costume. And he went out there and there was this little three-year-old, little beautiful little girl up on the stage dancing by herself. Something that I never thought I would see. Jeff jumped up on the stage in that costume, thrilled the little girl, and they danced together. I was so, I was so proud of the man that he was. Before Jeff died, though, we read her obituary in the paper. See, Camp Sunshine was a camp for kids with cancer, and now it's yeah, become life-threatening life yeah, diseases. Life -threatening diseases. But that, and sometimes when I get emotional, I'll say, well, the both of them are dancing among the stars now.